in listen-only mode. Well, a good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. And first of all, uh, Toronto and I would like to wish you a wonderful and happy new year for the 2014. I'm looking very much forward to this new year of trading as well. And uh, besides uh, a happy, healthy, and prosperous year, also a very profitable year we wish you. So looking forward to, uh, to that with all these webinars as well at Admiral Markets for this year. First of all, though, before we actually start this 2014 expected expectations webinar, the risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange is considered high risk and may not be all suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. Pretty good. So welcome once again to Admiral Markets. And we're going to take a look at 2014 expected. What, uh, what would be the big trends? what would be not trending, what's the euro dollar going to do, what's the dollar going to do, all of this uh, we're going to discuss Toronto and I, but uh, first of all actually before I share my thoughts, Toronto and I is going to, uh, to start kicking off in fact this evening's webinar. Thank you very much Chris. So today I will start with our little webinar about uh, this year's expectations. I will try to be as comprehensible as I can and I will, I will try to show you what I expect maybe longer term because as you all know I am a profis proficient in uh, intraday analysis so I'm not, uh, I don't like to, to make a big big uh, analysis what will happen but I will talk strictly with a fundamental analysis applied and technical levels. So this will be my overview for three currency pairs, for Euro dollar, for dollar yen, which is very, very interesting. And I might put it on uh, regular session recaps on every Monday, uh, dollar yen, because dollar yen and especially GBP <coughs> yen it, those pairs are perfect and we expect uh, and I expect personally for yen to further to fur, further uh, uh, go, to further weak against and to further lose, lose strength especially against dollar and uh, pound yen. As you could see today we also had a volatile market uh, our target price has been hit for euro dollar 36.50 has been hit as it went with our analysis and also well this might be this might be a start of uh, maybe a longer term downtrend but uh, don't expect it to be very very fast because we still have some room to the upside at least to 39.20, 39.50 I will show you that but overall uh, I after we hit those levels, if we hit it, then I think that we will be bearish. So far, the corrections and uh, bullish price action led us to believe that maybe euro will continue to go up. But as we could see on in, on the uh, 31st of December, we had a cable jump, but euro fell down. So. I guess that euro will soon start to fall. Okay. Uh, just a little, of course, a reminder. Chris told you about risk disclaimer. A reminder that uh, these charts, which I will show you, represent a longer time, a longer time frame view. So I did analysis on weekly charts, and you know that weekly charts usually take time to develop. Uh, that can last from couple of weeks to couple of months. Okay, so don't take this analysis. This is this year expected. So things might change, but I will tell you general guidelines uh, what I expect of those currencies in general and longer term trend. <clears throat> so have in mind the analysis is done on weekly charts again. And that can be, you know, it, it takes time, time to develop. Okay, 
the general guidelines are here. So for euro dollar, well, as we know, uh, just a little bit of, of fundamental analysis. Well, we need we need to know that Fed may look to scale back quantitative easing at some point in this year. So the tapering has already started, as you know, and that gave some strength to dollar, not as we expected maybe, but still it gave some injection boost into, into dollar. So I think that dollar index especially by scaling back quantitative easing, dollar index will start to rise. That's normal. Those are measures which are applied in special economic circumstances and I believe that scaling back of quantitative easing will do good for dollar currency. Also, ECB, European Central Bank, will likely continue to ease monetary policy in the year ahead. So, easing of monetary policy uh, usually, usually that comes in a way of, uh, let's see, ECB can cut the rate. Also, we can we can have some bond buying program. So basically, what I imply is ECB is not satisfact in in satisfaction with with uh, basically how things are developing in European zone, especially about monetary policy. There has been some weaknesses uh, in our uh, 2013, so I think that they will continue easing the monetary policy. Also, uh, I think that based on that, euro dollar will possibly develop short positioning and short trend. And I still imply that weekly trend may be short, so if you trade uh, longer time frames, there will be possibilities to short into rallies. For us, we trade intraday, that is not so important because we usually trade on one, one hour time frame so we can exploit both movements. But generally speaking, I expect Euro dollar in this year to be bearish, okay? Generally speaking. Also, we need to know that uh, Fed probably, as I said, will look to scale back quantitative easing at some point. And that represents a hockey shift along the monetary policy spectrum. Also, Eurozone CPI inflation was marked down from 1.5 to 1.3 percent in mid-November after November's ECB meeting. But on the contrary, November's Eurozone PMI data showed region-wide output prices across the industry spectrum fell for the 20th, 20th consecutive month. So that suggests that calls for lower inflation are rooted in real economy developments, so lower inflation. So that will lead to easing the monetary policy. And as I said, scenarios include negative deposit rates, another round of rows or direct lending programs similar to the Bank of England. If we experience a direct lending program, that will surely be a good sign for Euro, but not initially, not initially as I expect uh, Euro to fall if that happens initially. Then it may start to rise. And it may happen around 3160 uh, uh, after the top has been reached. Now, we had, as we all saw, a very, very close 39. It was very close to 39, but it didn't hit 3920 or 3950 as I thought it will. It came to 39, but it didn't, it didn't go above it. So, we may, now, I'm not sure at the moment, but there is room, as I said, to, to further, to further uh, upside jumps. But if this is the top, if the top has been reached, the target longer term is 3160. 
and I sell longer term. So it, that means that on intraday charts, we also may have some long trades, but generally speaking, that uh, trend can be shifted now to the downside in this year. I will show you how I technically see it, because technically there is a bearish wedge on weekly chart, although there is still room to the upside. And this is the weekly chart we can see. This is inner trend line, inner trend line that is very important. You can see how it goes through tops and bottoms. And also that trend line is in confluence with 39.20, the top, 39.20, this is the top, this is also the top, and we also can see that bearish wedge upper side intersects with inner trend line with previous top and with 61.8 fib retracement of the latest and biggest swing low, okay? So technically speaking, as I can see, it, just just from technical view, but all but also uh, with fundamental views, I have taken account into. I think that this might be the top now. This might be the top because I expected it to go a little bit further than reverse. But if this is the top, then we can see on weekly charts maybe a slow price action. Then if it breaks this level we can see a bearish wedge entry so probably the 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 target will be to the downside around thir uh, thir uh, 3160 3160 I expect it if it breaks the wedge I expect it to come and test that level at 38.2 retracement of the last swing low so this swing we cannot take an account to because why we don't measure this swing because this swing has already been played out okay this swing is no longer valid this is the valid swing because this is the top this is the bottom this is the retracement and possible top so weekly charts along with fundamental analysis all of these facts when I take all this into account I think that we can experience a bearish year, generally speaking, of course, bearish year for euro dollar. Okay. Now, uh, what do I see on dollar yen? So I I can say that maybe yen pairs were the best, absolutely the best for trading, because this kind of trading of yen pairs we had, we had. Some couple of years ago, 2007, 2008 year when euro start to fall. Now yen is starting to fall down. Yen has started already started to fall down. But to be honest, I didn't trade a lot dollar yen. I didn't trade much of that pair. But uh, maybe last two months I did yen trades, and they almost every single of them was a winner because it was all about buying into dips. So what I expect generally from dollar yen, I expect it because it's not at the highest level since the exception. It's not on, on the highest level, but the, the, the Bank of Japan policy is very, very strong. And Bank of Japan position to devaluate the yen further. That means, why? Because growth in Japan continues to stagnate. They need to devaluate, devaluate the yen. They need to lower the, their currency because their exports will suffer if yen is too high. This level is not still too high because we have seen higher levels. And also, we can see at the dollar and subsequent British pound analysis, we can see that they have a strong policy for their currency pairs. So, if dollar is going up, if great British pound, pound sterling is going up, and if yen is going down, what it does say to you? It says that there is currency war all over the board, 
and we can expect for dollar yen to go up and cable or oh sorry cable uh, great british pound yen or also called dragon to go up okay Th those are my views as i say and i think that they have basis in fundamental and technical analysis also the government of japan and the central bank of japan show every intention to continue a weak japanese yen policy and uh, as we can see, the U.S. Federal Reserve has already started tapering of their quantitative easing policies. Okay. Uh, the British pound could see similar support as the Bank of England, as the Bank of England pulls back policy easing. That leads, as I said, to Great British Pound Yen and Dollar Yen long trend. That can, that can be a long trend for those currency. I can explain uh, euro dollar, no problem. I, I can explain again about the lines. So just pay attention to this dollar yen. I will then get back to to euro dollar. Also, as we can see, as we will see on <clears throat> the charts, there is much room to the upside for dollar yen. 110.37 first major target should be for this pair and technically we can see that the strong very strong point in the near past was this so that was round 124 and then we had swings to the downside of course this is weekly chart and we could see the fall to 76 75 okay and what happened later we had a bullish pennant formed and then jumped to the upside breaking this level which was basically a good support and that when that level was broken dollar continued to gain strength on yen weakness and then we had a consolidation triangle triangle broke up to the upside and we could see that it start it it, it, it failed to break 61.8 if that level breaks we can see and i think we will see this level for sure and that level is this level this is the level 110.37 that will be the target if this level is broken but it still has the room to the upside because historically we could have seen that the prices were very very strong and then they continued to go down so there is still even if it touches that level there is still room to the upside so we can expect a further continuation of dollar yen strength okay now let me get back to that euro dollar okay i will explain the lines this is the inner trend line this inner trend line served as resistance after sorry as a support after this point has been broken and this point again has been broken that inner trend line ha is serving or has been serving us as resistance since then you can see how the price reacts to it you can see that the price went through it but then quickly closed below it this is longer term trend, trend line these are the lines which mark wedges this is the upper trend line this is the lower trend line when we put it on the on the chart we can see that this is a rising wedge and a rising wedge is bearish uh, uh, bearish mm, sorry this is a bearish type for trades this is a bearish chart pattern okay and the target how i got the target is if we, if you, if you can see this is the first level this level is not very significant because it still can it still can put the price in the wedge okay 
So this level is not very important for the bearish development. This level, which stands at 50% FIB, needs to be broken in order for the pair to go to 38.2. So I got that level simply by drawing a Fibonacci, Fibonacci retracement tool. So I think that that level will be the very first level for Euro dollar to go if, of course, on weekly time frame, if it passes through 50 retracement. So on intraday charts we can see and we will see some push to the downsides, then correction to the upside, possibly tangling around this level, but then if it breaks it, the ultimate target will be 38.2. I'm not counting on 23.6 just because we also have a trend line here and if we rate the trend line we can see that this will also be a big support. So this level I don't take it into account only 38.2 uh, 38 at the break of 50 retracement. Now I, I hope that that is clear, clear to you. Okay, you're, you're welcome. So that is my view for Euro dollar. Also this is bearish although it's called rising wedge it's a bearish chart pattern. You know that already. Dollar yen as I said I continue, I, I still think that dollar yen will continue to go to the upside, possibly hitting 110 and then proceeding further to possibly this level. Uh, what about cable? Also bullish, very bullish. Forward guidance by the Bank of England has given us some direction as to just where exactly we can expect rates to be headed in the coming months and years. I expect for cable especially for, for great British pound, I expect those rates should be hiked very, very soon. Because UK economy is standing firmly on the ground with both legs firmly on the ground. Compare UK to the rest of the world. The Eurozone is in a mess and US is still spending billions on their quantitative easing program. If you compare it to England and UK, you can see that their economy has been very, very steady. So I think that in near future, yes, I think that it will move up and I'm speaking again. Guys, uh, don't, uh, uh, as you know, I, I do intraday analysis, but don't think this is, these are general guidelines for the, this year. So I expect dollar yen to go generally, generally, it should go up. Generally speaking, euro dollar should go down. And generally speaking, for the whole year, it should be bullish trend for GBP dollar, okay? It will move up, but of course, if you trade intraday, then you need to know, it doesn't matter if you trade intraday, but generally speaking, for, for this year, cable should be bullish, dollar yen should be bullish, and euro dollar should be bearish for this year, okay? Why do I, why do I think that uh, this year will be bullish also for GBP dollar? Uh, because UK will possibly raise interest rates in the future, leading to stronger GBP. I uh, is there a way of analysis? I do, and uh, this is my analysis, and this is my experience. And I do every day. I do analysis on Admiral Marcus blog and Forex Factory website so you can visit Admiral Marcus blog you will see my my analysis so this is these are general guidelines uh, having in mind fundamental shifts and technical trading uh, this is also what I see on GBP this year weekly chart we can say that long-term trend line has been broken this is very strong confluence point here, here. So this trend line, once it has been broken at 63.80, I expect it to go to, it touched 66 as I presumed on the last session recap, but I think that this has the room for more upside. 
So it started to gain a little bit of steam for 50 retracement, which stands in between 722 and 758 for cable. So this year I also expect it to be bullish and we should go with if you if we trade longer time frames, we should buy into dips. As with dollar yen, this is the situation also for dollar uh, for GBP dollar uh, pound sterling cable. So this should go up on weekly time frame. So cable should go up, dollar yen should go up generally, uh, and euro dollar should go down. So in this year, those are my expectations that again euro dollar should be bearish, dollar yen should be bullish, and cable should be bullish. No, uh, this is not a system. This is not a system, and I don't recommend you. How, what's the name? G Waka. I don't recommend you to trade. These are expectations for this year. Okay, it is not system. It is not. It is not a, a trading strategy. This is simply the analysis and my expectations from this year. Okay. So those are the things that I see. As we can see here, we had rounded bottom, then it went up, then there was a bit of consolidation here, and then you can see how strong the consolidation, how strong this level was. First it broke to the upside, then it went down, 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 down. It couldn't break it, it went even more to the downside, but then we see up channel, this is up channel, this is longer trend, trend, trend line cross, and this is confluence point, which intersects channel line, longer term trend line cross, and price action cross. So generally, on good news, this should push cable very, very far to the upside. On intraday good news, we should buy into dips, okay, generally. So now I will uh, uh, I will pass the presentation to Chris. He will also give you his overview of the market, and just another reminder, guys. This is not a trading system nor a trading strategy. These are our general guidelines for this year. So thank you very much, and Chris, you can continue to lead. Great. Awesome stuff there, T. And, uh, Thanks. I actually have something uh, pretty similar. We'll take a look at that. This is what I have prepared here regarding the 2014 expectations. Oh, wrong slide there. One second. No. Sorry about that. There it is. 2014 expectations. Well, uh, after looking at all the um, basically uh, levels on the yen, you obviously, of course, can see that last year was a very bullish year with 105 close and open of 87 at the, the uh, 2nd of January 2013. So about 87, roughly speaking, maybe 86, but it was a, and anyhow a, a definitely a bullish year, about 1,800 pips, and the wick at the top, if, if you would have a yearly candle of 2013, the wick would only be a couple of pips. So obviously with, with very, very bullish bullish yearly candle, if, if, if we look at yearly candles. So this is a major trend, this is a major impulse. And usually speaking, if there's such a big candle, uh, what I expect is maybe at max a small dip and follow through. So I am looking for yen weakness continuation just like T. I'm also looking for odd weakness continuation uh, here too for, for a bit at least. We'll dive into the charts very soon. But this is what I would say primarily for the first quarter is, is easier to, to be a bit more uh, secure on that I would say. The rest of the year is, 
is more tougher, but uh, especially for the first quarter, I would expect this trend as per the last couple of months, the last half a year or so, to, to continue, right? Or the, the odd, in fact, the last eight months and the, the yen to be very precise, a year and three months with some pause, of course, as the triangle that uh, T was talking about, too. Here you can see the dollar yen, and uh, we can see, of course, that downtrend lasted uh, quite long. Um, years, in fact, decades, if you really go back further, but this uh, has been moving up very nicely. You can see a very, very bullish year where we actually had, this is an old chart, we have it actually a bit higher, this, this, um, the, uh, the close. So this is what I'm thinking of for the dollar yen. Upside, maybe a small dip down first, but I don't expect the retrace to be that much on the dollar yen. It could go back to your test 10372. I would think, oh, apologies, that's my phone. One second. Sorry about that. I normally have it on mute, and today I needed someone to reach me, so then I took it off and forgot to put it on mute again. So uh, let's see. Basically, small dip. But wouldn't expect this top to be broken. That would be a major support. If it does, then maybe the analysis changes. But um, anything above that 103.70 level is bullish. Any down moves, in my opinion. Any upside continuation, indeed, targets that 110 level, which is the first of all the uh, the top here on the left res resistance, but also the minus 272 target. At 110 on the high side, close to 111 is the minus 272 target. That's what I would expect because we did bounce off a 38.2. So the 38.2 usually has the minus 272 target. Now, there are usually three reactions. Either we got a small move down sideways and continuation up to the minus 618. We got a bull flag and a consolidation maybe for a few months, like we had this year, a triangle, but maybe now more a bull flag type of formation I would expect. And then a continuation up to the minus 618. Or we get a deeper retracement to test these bottoms here again. And if we would fit from the 38.2 up to the minus 272, it could be a deep retracement all the way to the 78.6. So how do we know which one will happen? It really depends when price reaches the minus 272 target, how the price will respond. If, it's, if price were to break the 38.2, then there's a decent probability price will make the retracement all the way down to the 780.6. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my drawing tool open, so give me just a second as, oh, I lost my screen. <laughs> That's funny. I only see a blue blue screen, in fact. Well, that will not help me. Well, yeah, I cannot uh, draw, but um, basically what it boils down to is, if you can see my cursor, hopefully, if you take the FIB from the 38.2, up to the 272 target, you will get fibs there, and if it breaks the 38.2, we could see a move down all the way to the 78.6. That's this red scenario, or we would see a bull flag that touches the 38.2 and bounces. In any case, bullish. Will it really reach all the way to the minus 618? That too is not a guarantee necessarily. The minus 272 could be the target, and we go into a big consolidation. That is one of these scenarios as well. But considering the yen uh, as a has nicely summarized all the basically the uh, fundamental factors. The fundamental factors do favor, I would say, the 618 over the minus 272. However, the minus 272 will be that stalling spot, right? So that's basically it. Bullish to 272, then curious how the price will respond, and um, then probably the continuation. Um, although, of course, that analysis will change. Um, and take, of course, the new information into account to judge whether that would be likely. But ultimately, at the moment, I still think the minus 618 is a decent chance, uh, eventually, depending on also how, which correction we get, how far the correction will go, uh, then we can judge when this second breakout to the minus 618 could happen. So I think all these three scenarios are good probability of these corrections. The bull flag maybe just a tad more, but it's difficult to say. In any case, it's, it's really not that relevant. This could happen easily in the second part of 2004 that we get 14, sorry. <laughs> I was off by a decade there. Um, so basically, we can get these uh, cor corrections 
easily in, uh, in the second part of 2014. This upside could definitely take a few months, this first green arrow. The odd USD. Well, we had a big, big triangle here. Uh, in fact, that triangle broke to the downside, not to the upside, although it was looking like a bullish triangle, it actually broke to the downside. That's why sometimes it's important to keep an eye on both levels, both breakouts, because this was a good breakout to the downside. And we're closing pretty much closed near the low, which means if you look at it from a yearly perspective, we had to open with this first green line where it marks 2012, December. That was the close. We had open, that and open, a uh, small wick on top, but otherwise a bearish candle with a close very near the low. So very, very bearish. And uh, we had a retracement to the 50 fib in, uh, in August, approximately September, and then a fall again the last few months. Here too, maybe a small dip up, a correction, but otherwise I would expect continuation and don't expect much of an upside correction. Um, We'd have to look at a four-hour chart to see, or daily chart to see how far it could go. I don't see it from here. Maybe these highs here could be a natural resistance that the currencies probably would not break. And there's also a trend channel effect capturing this downside. That, too, probably would not break, although it is a pretty steep channel, so maybe it could be corrected before we get more downside. The targets here, this support level around 80, there is a minus 272 target around 85. Sorry about that. Oh. I'm not sure if you see these Skype messages. I apologize for that. I have Skype closed. And my computer is acting a bit stranger um, than usual here. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm not sure why these messages are popping up because it is closed. But anyhow, technology. So 85, the minus 272 target um, on this audio is DS first, but the 80 number possible as well, which is the support for the moment. How about the dollar in general, though? We talked about the yen and the odd weakness. Those were the prevailing trends, uh, I would say, with a bit of pound strength, definitely, too, this year. What about the dollar? Because uh, although these trends could continue, at some point or another, you would expect those to stop and new trends to emerge. Well, the dollar certainly has not been one of those trending pairs. It has been in a, in a wedge. This is the dollar index. You can see this triangle. In fact, more recently, it has even slowed down more. Looking at the magenta lines here, uh, the basically price really, really very choppy up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Lots of variations here. Um, so. Looking for either a dollar strength scenario upon the break of this uh, brown line here to the upside, the green arrow, to the, to the resistance lines there at first. That ties into what Toronto was saying about the euro dollar to the potential breakout to the downside down to 131. That would tie into this dollar index. The downside break here would also tie into what Toronto said because on the euro dollar, because basically that would be still the upside break that we still have some space that we could see the euro dollar move up a bit. Um, so that would be a breakout of this magenta line to the downside to challenge the next purple line. You can see though that there's, this is a consolidation within the consolidation, which means even if we break out of the smaller consolidation, we're still in the bigger consolidation. Uh, although there could be dollar dollar strength eventually this year, I do agree with the tapering scenario. Of course, the question how much, how fast, when will definitely influence when and if the dollar will strengthen. That still remains to be seen. Anytime 2014, I would expect some dollar strength to, to set in. I, I do agree. Question is, do we first go to 143, uh, 143 and then have the weakness? The, the, that is the question, whether we will really break out of the bigger consolidation, right, looking at the purple trend lines here, this year, that is something that maybe I have still some doubts, although I've been looking at this bearish triangle on the, on the your dollar for quite a while, um, you know, the consolidation sometimes takes very long to play out. So whether this bigger consolidation will break might not be this year or maybe the end of this year, it would take a significant event to, to really let this dollar 
trend, either what I would expect upside, dollar strength, or uh, even uh, the opposite the trend of dollar weakness. So that would really, you know, could be maybe 2015, 16, who knows. Uh, where can we find the dollar index? Let me think. Let's take a quick look here. Let me open it. And one second. Uh, dollar index. Oh, charts. It's under charts and then IUSDX. IUSDX. Okay, so you click on the plus here, go to charts and then click on IUSDX. Good. So now the euro dollar. With that said, we in my vision are at a resistance spot on the euro dollar too. Look at the upper brown line here. Price is right at it. Price is at the 61.82. We've only had a small spike above it, um, which you know it means nothing really from this weekly perspective. Those 50 pips above the 61.8 fib. This is a resistance spot. If we manage to break out of it, because you do see a green uptrend channel, if we manage to break out of that brown line to the upside or dark red, then we can see a green arrow pointing to the 78.6, which is the 143. There's also a magenta line connecting the tops. That too is a potential at the 886, 146. So that would be the breakout scenario to the upside. However, at the moment, price has not broken out yet. Price is right at the resistance. There's also, of course, uh, the potential for a bounce instead of a break to the upside, a bounce to the downside. But then before we can have a confirmation of the bounce, we need actually a break below this green channel. The green channel needs to break for downside. And uh, we could see a challenge of 131 and uh, maybe even lower, maybe 130. We would have this lower purple line here coming in as a support. And we could have a breakout trade from the green break to the downside to the challenge to purple. If that purple breaks, you know, then you're looking at really more significant dollar strength. Um, that all depends on how price develops, how it breaks. And this prognosis is really, a, you know, it, it, you can make it, you can say if this purple breaks, we can see the next break to the, to the brown, but brown uh, a lower line. But, you know, it's difficult because we would really need to see how price responds how is price breaking to the downside? With what uh, speed and what 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 time frames? You know, this is we really have to reanalyze as price really develops. But it is possible. That would be though a more stronger dollar strength scenario, um, of course. So as you can see, first upside and then down, and maybe we end. Basically, that could be a year of a non-event dollar year, maybe. Who knows if the tapering takes longer? It could be first upside, then down, and we end up the same spot as this year, or we'll indeed see a breakout and and then a bigger fall, or we see the fall immediately, and will there be a year of significant dollar strength because the tapering goes a lot faster? Those are kind of the the main scenarios I would say here. Um, of course, there's a lot of room for interpretation, but you know there's no other way with an analysis that tries to incorporate the whole year uh, with a lot of different events that could influence it. Pound dollar weekly, also a pretty wide decision tree potential. I was looking at this as a bearish triangle. However, we did break above it. What we happened here is with this recent move up where you see the fib, you see that fib in the middle here? There's a 38.2 fib. Actually, we bounced off to 23.6. That is a, a very shallow retracement, a bull flag right at the top of the purple line there, and now we broke out of it. Price is above the purple line, not yet, of course, totally cleared the resistance, the red lines. So there is still was a resistance, but the bearish triangle is far from ideal with this bullish breakout to the upside. However, the resistance is still close by, so some downside is still possible. First up to the resistance, then down off of that resistance, as you can see with the red arrows, then there could be a bounce when we retrace and retest the weekly top of the triangle. You can see a green arrow, and maybe if we continue a substantial weekly breakout to go to 180, for example, on the pound, 
right? That's one of the scenarios. Unfortunately, there's I, I, I still mentioned the downside scenario because of the bearish triangle, uh, because of the euro dollar, the dollar strength potential. If this dollar strength would indeed finally kick in, then maybe this pound can fall as these arrows indicate. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 maybe an alternative B scenario. I would say on this pound indeed. Looking at the, the fundamentals as as Floso Tarantula presented. One other way, of course, is after oh, sorry about that. After two red arrows, we can get one more green and end up at the same spot basically here where we where we started maybe this year. Pound yen, a lot of space to the upside. That's basically what I wanted to say. I mean, not to say that we should necessarily jump long at every single level possible. But uh, yeah, this is a, a tremendous trend, and uh, with some pounds, dollar upside still remaining, dollar yen weakness, uh, sorry, yen weakness and dollar yen strength. Yeah, the, if you look at it from a technical point of view, the 50 fib is at 183.90, resistance point at 191. So yeah, there is a lot of space. There is a lot of space, and um, this uptrend. Uh, I predicted already when live here in 2011, 2012, and yeah, it's just kind of a bit proud to see indeed how this has been trending up. Uh, although I don't have a trade from the 119 area, I did think about it. I was joking about it. I didn't do it though. Shame. <laughs> Would be fun. Anyhow, it is uh, amazing how small you know how, how this has been trading. We had some small consolidations here, but very, very, very trendy. XAU USD. Uh, the red lines, basically, I'm using logical or, well, what I would think are logical resistance and support levels. And what I mean with logical is four more bottoms. You can see that this red line here is because of the former bottom, which was a support and now can become resistance. This red line is based upon this, in fact, this 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 top. Uh, we could also put a red line here at these bottoms, in fact, at the 78.6. But you know, I didn't do it because it's so far away from here. So it's uh, weekly support and resistance levels. This is XAU USD, and uh, was bearish ever since this fall. Um, had some doubts with this breakout to the upside, but it couldn't break this resistance level here at around uh, 1800. And it was very bearish when when this fall happened and hooked back, was selling it and selling it, and uh, was um, yeah was basically people I think were still clinging on to the idea this was an uptrend, but in honesty because of the lack of sufficient follow through here it was expected the bearishness here to 1250 however we broke 1250 went all the way to 1180 in fact got a hook back to the 38.2 fib and it went down again if we do break this green bottom at 1180 we could see a fall down to 1090 which is the 50 fib that could be a bouncing spot for upside again or at least some stall and pause and who knows maybe consolidation and break to the upside or even one more break to the downside Difficult to imagine, maybe XAU going that low, but who knows? So the green line is important, 1177, and then 1087. Channel is important because a break above that channel, we could see maybe a bigger correction, could have double bottom. Possible, surely possible. Um, although the maybe the fundamentals wouldn't support it that much, but in any case. An upside to retest this top or these bottoms, which now should become resistance. 23.6 here at 1528. That should become resistance if price were to make it that far. So this is a downtrend, but we are at support. So quarter, quarter one, basically, to sum it up. Dolly in to 111 or 110, depending on, on how you draw the targets, but roughly the same spot. Continuation of that uptrend. Odd USD to roughly 85, 84 at least, maybe 80. Continuation of that downtrend. Um, Euro dollar 
I have two scenarios, either the break, break out to the upside or the bounce, right? The break to 143 or maybe the bounce to 131 or 130. Pound dollar looks pretty set on maybe getting to 166.50, 167.50 eventually, although we had some downside today. Uh, after that, we could see some downside as a, as, a, as a respect for the bigger resistance. I say you, I wouldn't be surprised if the downside continuation, although we still have to break 1177. The other currencies, I, if, if, you know, the thing is that if you have the yen trending, the Aussie trending, and uh, you got some pound movement, there's really not much space for other currencies to move. It's virtually, you know, it's very difficult for all the currencies to move at the same time because that would basically mean the forex market has gone crazy because then you have the crosses moving as well, right? If you have the yen moving, then all the crosses are of the yen are moving. Not only the dollar yen is moving, but the euro yen is moving, the pound yen is moving. That means if the euro is moving as well, you know, if all these are moving, it would be just a crazy race up and down on those crosses. So there has most of the time, some are standing still, then others are moving. Swissy was moving a lot in 2010. Hardly moved an inch, relatively speaking, uh, this year though. So that's how, yen hardly moved in 2011. Um, I think it was fall, roughly. Didn't move an inch. There was times where it hardly even moved 10 pips within a day. Totally, totally flat, right? Now, yen is, 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 a, is a great trending currency. So we have to realize that there are grand trends in play at certain times, and then those trends stop, and then other currencies start to trend. And, you know, that the dollar, the euro is moving a lot against the dollar uh, until, you know, now it's just relatively stuck in a, in a very tight consolidation if you look at its movements. That's just how it goes and the ability to recognize when a currency pair could be trending a lot or, or, or the other one could be trending of course is very important for swing traders uh, primarily and also position traders. So I think Swissy, Kiwi, CAD, relatively flat I would say in quarter one crosses probably up. I mean if the yen is moving up and uh, you know, we it depends on the euro if it breaks to the upside or bounces it, if it breaks to the upside the EJ would be your euro yen would be moving up a lot of course if the euro dollar bounces to the downside then we should see the dollar yen move more than the euro yen that does depend how about the rest of the quarters well i would say quarter 2 there's still a decent you know percentage to see the the dollar yen and odd USD trend continue, uh, but there's also a chance that we get into consolidation and that trend might continue later that year. We might, as I said with the dollar yen, make a bigger correction, but if we hit the minus 272, if we do make that bigger correction, we're not going to continue with that trend. It's a bit of a toss up there, I would say. How about the dollar? Well, when I, when I say 35% chance of USD strength, I mean substantial USD strength, um, really like, I'm talking about the bigger consolidation, um, you know, the smaller consolidation, there's, there's probably a higher percentage, obviously, connected to that, um, but from the bigger perspective, you know, there's also just a, a fair chance that maybe even if we fall down to 131, that we still bounce up to the upside then, and this year, 2014, remains a dollar neutral, neutralish year. That is also possible. Um, now, once again, these percentages are just my based on my assumptions and realistic, as far as I can make realistic expectations. Swissy, I do expect a bit weakness, but let's see. I can in Kiwi two. But, I mean, nothing spectacular. Uh, what would be the next trend? Uh, well, I would say maybe dollar or pound. So, you know, when the yen and the Aussie trend stops, what would be the next big mover? I don't think Swissy, but it could definitely be the dollar 
or pound or both. So, um, you know, I, I agree with Toronto that those could be the next ones lined up. Whether that is 2014 or 2015, that remains uh, to be seen. Depends also how much yen and odd weakness we get and how long that takes to develop, I would say. But, so this is roughly what I'm thinking of. Um, so let's see. I was, as a, I can proudly say that um, the Aussie trend, I kind of hit. Uh, I hit pretty well because this year, because of April, I said it's going. Aussie's going to be down to 92 by June. That was a nice prediction. It was one I liked, and the yen I was also good. This this time around, I to be honest, I don't see it as clear as maybe I did with the Aussie. Um, I would say or gold, by the way, or the yen. Those were trends that really were. I, I had more, let's say, uh, say, confidence in those that those would happen, and those did play very nicely. Um, I do think dollar strength trend. Uh, will appear. The question is only when. Maybe because it has been, you know, has, has taken so long to develop. I'm a bit cautious with with that still. But uh, let's see. So that's why a bit less clear for me this year. Maybe other webinars. Well, that wraps it up. If you have any questions, by the way, let us know. We'll take a look at that. And uh, just for your information purposes, we got some great stuff coming up this month. In my opinion, we've got Forex news trading, scalping the Forex market, harmonic patterns, oh, there's a typo there, patterns, and oscillators part two. So I think some goodies there for all the various tastes and, and uh, interests. And of course, as always, we will have our usual live webinars. Again, starting next week, learning labs, trading labs, expert advice labs, and this webinar next week again, of course. So that's all starting as usual, back to normal schedule. Now that the, the holiday seasons have, uh, have finished, got one question. Is there beginner's webinar? Uh, let's take a look. The well, the intro to harmonics is definitely beginners. It's an introduction. Scalping could be more for advanced. Um, I I need to say we will have a, a beginners webinar for chaos trading, and I think this will be due this month, and uh, that I will make an introduction to chaos trading. But for mutual webinars. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe me and Chris should make uh, another set of those, those uh, introduction and basic basic webinars because I know that many people are asking for that. So we will see that. We will see. Just for a quick reminder, I will make a chaos trading webinar with a chaos system explained, but mm, that is a different thing from price action trading so maybe I will talk to Chris again and maybe we will make another another set of beginners webinar we will see that had an introduction to volume spread analysis on the 8th and also trend line trading on the 8th is the blue line here indicating anything that's blue lined like this is more for beginners by the way if you go to admiralmarkets.com, click on education, click on webinars, you can see the level, the degree kind of roughly speaking by red I think should be most difficult, I would assume. Green is intermediate probably and the blue is the easiest I think. So you can see that just to give an idea which ones this is, there's a mistake here, but most of them are correct. <laughs> yeah.
And you can see here the different tabs, by the way. Expert advice at Wednesdays, Pro Learning Lab, that's this one at Thursdays. Weekly recap on Mondays, and then the live trading labs on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Try to attend those webinars because you will surely get some knowledge and you will surely get some confidence in, in, in uh, your trade. Especially if you visit our weekly Forex Recap and uh, Pro Learning Lab with Chris. So that will be most welcome that you visit two of those if you, if you don't have the time for every each of the webinar. But to be honest, Pro Learning Lab and weekly Forex Recap are so far been very, very fruitful. And you can see there you can see how we expect the price to develop and what setups we will take for some of those currency pairs. Okay guys, if you don't have any questions, we can conclude the webinar. So next webinar will be on the 6th of January. That will be weekly Forex recap then. We have on 7th of January live trading lab with Chris Moving Average Trading. So sign up for those webinars. That will help you no matter if you're a beginner or advanced trader. All of those setups may be aligned with yours. So I think that you all can benefit from this way of analysis and trading. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we can call it a day. I wish you a good week, many green pips, and see you very, very soon. Cheers, everyone. Have a great week.